Hey guys, it's Cece. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the top 10 things not to do in Summoner's War. Number one is going to be don't just six star any unit. When you are starting out in this game, the resources are fairly limited. You, As you get later on, you'll have more resources, you can six star things, but in the beginning it's really important to kind of think about what you're six starring and why. So I'm going to take this unit for example. She is one of the units who has an anti-revive, but we're at the point in the game where there's other units who can do it but better than she can do. So one of the ones that now I don't use and is one of my regrets. That being said, in the beginning you may have units who help carry you through the game. I definitely had units that I wouldn't have gotten to the point I was if I didn't invest in them a little bit. That being said, I feel like it's never a mistake making a 5 star, but if you're moving into a 6 star, just consider a little more about the unit. Do you need to 6 star them? Is it really going to help you in progression? Is it going to be a unit that you will continue to use throughout the game? So think critically when you are picking those 6 stars. Number 2 is going to be don't build too many units at once, especially if you are early on. It may be tempting when you get new units, you want to ruin them all and be able to use them all, but if you do this you will be spreading your runes too thin. So a good idea is to build monsters that either have multiple uses or put your focus into one thing. So starting out the best thing that you can do is build a solid giants team and focus on that. Put your best runes on those PvE monsters and farm that Kairos dungeon as much as you possibly can. You will get more runes, eventually you can put those on your other units and invest into them. But starting out you don't want to spread yourself too thin so keep your focus in one place. Talking about monsters who do have multiple uses brings us into point number three. And this is don't build single monsters, but rather build teams. So when you have a lot of monsters or you have like new ones and you're kind of unsure, you're like, who do I six star next? What do I want to six star? I've seen people ask other people like, oh, what should I six star? Really think about where you're going to use them because there are definitely certain comps in this game who work very nicely together, but the unit on their own might not be that great or you might not have something that can actually support it. So example here, we have Rowe and this is just the first one that comes up, but he's a unit with multiple uses. You can use them in PvP, you can also use them in PvE. So when you're building units, think of where else can you use them and think about what team comp can you put them in. Number four is to not be tempted to use your devil mods on your nat fours. I know it's like if you see the max cooldown, you see the attack damage you can get out of it, all the things that having it fully skilled up will give you, it could be tempting to feed your devil mods into it, but oftentimes it's not worth it hang on to them, hopefully you'll get the other skill up from the families and things like that because devil mods are harder to come by, especially if you are free to play. You are relying on your one from arena, your one from TOA, TOA hard events if they have them. So if you do get a nat 5, they will require some devil mods and you'll often want to save them to use on the nat 5s versus nat 4. So you might have to be a little patient to get those skill ups, but it will be worth it if you're having a tough time and you need them skilled up. Save it for the nat fives. Number five, the best place to use your crystals is energy. I know how tempting it can be to use those crystals on summons, but especially now with the multi farm, you are going to be farming different things. You will be doing different things in the game that will eat up a lot of energy. And in the game, you may have monsters, but what are monsters without runes? And you need energy to farm runes. So the best place that you can use that is definitely going to be energy. If you have a surplus, then yeah, do some summons, get some nat fives. Otherwise though, this is where you want to use it. Speaking of summons brings us to number six. It's worth it to use your crystals on packs versus your individual crystal summons. Technically the rates are the same, but if you're buying the pack, you'll at least get the mana for the scroll. So that's not going to take anything. You also get your angel mon of each attribute. So overall, it's just worth it. If you are planning on summoning, do the packs versus the individuals. For number seven, it's don't ignore your towers and your flags. So if we're talking about arena, you of course want to get your devilmon first and then save the rest of your glory points for your towers. Same thing in guild. So get your rainbow mon first and then save the rest of it for your towers. It will make a difference when you are actually in there in battle. You have that bonus 20%. 25% and any little bit extra that you can get on your units will always help. So don't ignore these, save up and invest in them. For number eight, it is don't plus 15 every rune that you get. 
early on you will be upgrading your runes and you will replace them so quickly as you're farming and getting better runes. The other point is like certain runes, for example, if you're using an accuracy on a slot six and you wanna hit 100% accuracy on your unit, you might not need that rune plus 15. It might be fine at 12 and give you enough or even like a weird number like 13. So double check, do you need to plus 15 it? And with other runes as well, like I said, some of them might not be worth it. You're just gonna be using mana on there. So if they do what they need to do at 12, Keep it at that, you will always be improving your runes and getting better ones that you will actually want to upgrade fully. And just in case you were curious how this rune upgraded. For number 9, it's don't skip out on events. So if we're looking at the ones they have right now, we have Elia's Winter Mission. And we were talking about resources earlier and this is a great example. So you can actually get a Devilmon from here and they also have the daily mission. So using your 400 energy daily will give you mana and the special gift which is going to change. So it might be the Ancient Coin, it might be Mystical scroll summoning stones you never know so it's a great idea to check what's going on and make sure that you complete it and for number 10 the final point is don't get discouraged at your own progress find what you enjoy doing in the game and have fun with it for me it's summoning and collecting so that's what I'm gonna focus on it's really easy to compare your profile your progress to somebody else's but keep in mind you spend different amounts of time in game you enjoy playing different aspects of the game so find what's fun for you I hope you guys enjoyed these top 10 things not to do in summoners war so let me know what is a point that you would include give the video a thumbs up hit the subscribe button down below I am putting new videos out daily and you don't want to miss out so bye for now Next level.